good morning everyone uh, i have a subject here which who is quite lean and so uh, i hope it would be easier for me to demonstrate the various parts of the uh, hollow viscera within the abdomen so uh, let me first start with a convex probe uh, i am taking a convex probe and putting it in the mid sagittal plane in the epigastrium I'll just increase the depth, and then I am slightly uh, rotating the probe towards the left side of the patient to see the gastroesophageal junction. So this uh, gas that you are seeing here is in the gastroesophageal junction as you can see it is at the posterior superior margin of the just behind the posterior superior margin of the liver and it is seen anterior to the aorta i have asked him to swallow just to be able to see the lumen as you, you can see there is some movement of the saliva at the gastroesophageal junction with the convex probe i am not able to see the five layers of the gastric wall or the gut signature as said by dr onkar sir but let's try to see it with a, a linear probe if we can make out because this patient is quite uh, lean and thin and uh, one more thing that i would like to uh, say at this point is that this particular view is also important uh, in uh, seeing for the uh, free air is in the peritoneum which can be seen in cases of uh, uh, perforation the air is seen the air is seen here uh, overlying the the air is seen uh, here overlying the left lobe of the liver so this is a very good view that shows us the uh, presence of free air within the peritoneal cavity it also tells us about the caudate lobe of the liver and the size of the left lobe and the uh, caudate lobe their relative sizes and uh, another thing that and this in this view if i make the my probe transverse and uh, give it a slight cranial angulation i can see the i can see the heart and if there is any pericardial fluid so by keeping the probe here i uh, see uh, look at uh, these three things this is uh, in addition to the gastroesophageal junction that we can see in this view uh, let's try to see uh, if we can uh, see the gastroesophageal junction with the linear probe i'm trying to reduce the depth uh, no it's not possible so mm, i'll directly see uh, go for the stomach so from the epigastrium we are able to see uh, the mid body and the antrum of the stomach i have given this patient around a liter of water to drink before the start of this examination so from the epigastrium uh, we will be able to see only the mid body and the antrum and the pylorus can you pull this up upar no not so so i see that there is some air in the pyloric region and here here just in the prepyloric antrum there is fluid and i am able to see the um, mucosal layer and uh, this is the uh, gut signature that uh, dr rungar just spoke about i am seeing it at the far wall of the uh, stomach so this is the interface of the fluid with the mucosa this is the muscularis mucosa and the deeper mucosa this is the sub mucosa after that we see the um, muscularis propria 
this one and then the zeros are so this is at the far wall of the uh, uh, pre pyloric region of the stomach so what i do is i just try to trace it and where the uh, lumen of the stomach narrows a bit then that is the portion where the pylorus of the stomach start i'll just ask the patient to move into a right decubitus position so that we are able to see the pylorus better is correct to you now it's seen excellently i have made the probe uh, longitudinal so as to cut the pylorus and see the uh, wall of the uh, pylorus properly if i measure uh, the wall it is around Three millimeter in, uh, in size. Normally, during routine practice, it is not possible to achieve uh, so much of distension of the stomach. So, uh, the normal value of the gastric wall is taken to be uh, uh, taken to be around seven millimeters. Thickne wall thickening which is beyond one centimeter is usually malignant. Now you can you are able to see the uh, wall uh, which is closer to the uh, probe. quite uh, well and it is still showing the uh, gut signature two echogenic lines and uh, and the third one is at the serosa and two hypoechoic lines so again if you want to revise this is the interface of mucosa with the fluid this is the uh, muscularis mucosa and the deeper mucosa which is hypoechoic this is sub mucosa and uh, this hypoechoic again is the muscularis propria and then the echogenic serosa so uh, this gut signature uh, defines uh, that the structure is bowel and helps us to differentiate many pathologies and to confirm uh, some pathologies like a duplication cyst if you notice if as we move from uh, the antrum to the pylorus there is slight thickening of the there is slight uh, there is slight thickening of the muscularis propria if i trace the uh, pylorus further and i'll be seeing the uh, first part of the duodenum or the duodenal cap duodenum is often filled with gas and so it's many a times it's not possible to evaluate uh, duodenum as here uh, this is the duodenal cap and it is quite completely filled with gas even though the patient is in the uh, right lateral decubitus position so i will uh, make the uh, patient again supine seedha suja still no luck uh, so i'll go and see for the uh, fundus of the stomach uh, fundus of the stomach can be uh, seen across uh, through the spleen by scanning in the uh, left mid axillary line so i'm uh, scanning uh, through the spleen so this is the spleen here and i am looking at the uh, fundus of the stomach now if there is any fluid collection here or a pseudo cyst here and if we are confused that whether we are really looking at the fundus of the stomach or uh, if it's a pseudo cyst or fluid collection then give a small uh, sip of water to the patient and uh, uh, see for the moving uh, echoes within the uh, fundus of the stomach so if we are able to see the moving echoes it confirms that we are looking at the fundus of the stomach uh, can we give him uh, just a sip of water unda dharun sangel gitak a sip of water within the fundus of the stomach so uh, even the stomach is a bit uh, difficult to uh, image you still uh, we can we are able to see maximum of the stomach using this various approaches 
first of all in mid sagittal plane then in the transversely in the epigastrium and then across the spleen so then again i am uh, trying to uh, come and see the now here we are able to see the first part of the duodenum well this is the duodenal cap it is triangular in shape and it shows traction just by the side of the head of the pancreas i am able to see the second part of the even difficult to differentiate from the head of the pancreas malignancy so uh, the third part of the duodenum can be seen in the transverse uh, in the transverse view just passing beneath the uh, passing beneath the head head and anterior process of the pancreas and anterior to the ivc and aorta gall bladder is just lateral to the common to sometimes misdiagnose air in the duodenum uh, as to that of the as to the calculus in the gall bladder so what we can do is if we find we can see the gall bladder in multiple planes here i am seeing it uh, by keeping the probe along the costal margin and then we can take a subcostal view and uh, thereby we, uh, by multiple taking multiple views of the gall bladder we can be sure that the um, ecogenic focus that we were seeing is actually the duodenal gas and not the calculus in the uh, gall bladder and here we are seeing the second part of duodenum well okay so uh moving further uh now we will be uh, trying to see the small bowel how what is the appearance of the small bowel now we see that these are the je jejunal loops i am in the left just below the left hypochondrium and uh, i am able to see uh, the proximal jejunal loops they are not fluid filled that's why i am not able to uh, show you the volvule uh, conjunctus very well but some fluid is now just gushing it into it and we can see the peristalsis if you look at the wall of the uh, small intestine it is usually 2 mm in thickness not more than that uh, and uh, it also shows the gut signature uh, if all five layers are not visible at least the three layers uh, would be would be visible in routine practice it is generally enough to have a sweep across the uh, abdomen for the small bowel right from starting from the root of the mesentery up to the right iliac fossa and then uh, scanning uh, on the right side of abdomen and on the left side of the abdomen to uh, get a uh, this thing uh, whether any abnormality is present or not generally if there is a mass present in the abdomen then a resistance would be felt in the probe while sliding the probe across the abdomen so that uh, gives away a mass in the abdomen so here i am trying to see the volvule here we are able to see the difference between volvule and the hosta is that the volvule are very thin they are closely spaced and uh, they they and they are circumferential whereas hosta are thicker farther placed and uh, they are incomplete they do not encircle the um, bowel Let me zoom it. Focus. Focus. Here I am uh, trying. 
trying to show a jejunal loop. Uh, As compared to the jejunal loop, the ideal loops are featureless. Uh, they lack the volvule conjugates, and the most important uh, portion uh, in the small intestine that a radiologist for a radiologist is the terminal ileum, because terminal ileum is generally the site uh, which is which may be involved in infection, inflammation, uh, inflammatory bowel disease, and also malignancy. Now the terminal ileum we are seeing it on the screen. It runs, it comes from the pelvis, runs over the anterior to the ilia, uh, iliac uh, vessels, and anterior to the sous muscle, and then uh, goes to join the uh, cecum. It's very well seen here. So uh, it it is showing it is showing all the properties of a normal bowel. It is uh, pliable. It is compressible. Now I'm trying to compress uh, it. if i am trying to compress it and it uh, does uh, reduce in size after compression and then i am releasing the compression once again compression and then release of compression so where a normal bowel is compressible it shows peristalsis and the wall thickness uh, is within the prescribed limit in the uh, terminal ileum if after compression the wall thickness should not be more than 4 mm Uh, as uh, we will measure in this case it's around 4 uh, mm exactly so we are also seeing the gut signature here and uh, since uh, the lumen does not uh, uh, the, uh, the lumen is empty we are seeing that the two walls of the terminal ileum are opposed to each other and uh, therefore if we want to measure the uh, thickness of the wall we have to take the uh, measurement from zero to zero sa to zero sa and then divide it by 2 so uh, like here and then divide by 2 so 7 divided by 2 is 3.5 so it is well within the normal limits sometimes we can also see uh, the ileum uh, entering into the cecum uh, and uh, we'll be we can be able to make out the ileocecal junction uh i'm tracing the terminal ileum here and here this one this is pro this is the ileocecal junction if you can note uh, there is gas in the cecum and the ileum is entering into it we can see the peristalsis in the uh, terminal ileum there can be some amount of reverse peristalsis in the terminal ileum which uh, which is supposed to be normal now uh for the appendix uh what we can do is uh, we first place a probe whenever uh, patient comes uh, with a suspected appendicitis what we can do is we can probe place a probe transversely in the right just below the right costal cartilage laterally and then try to uh, trace the gas in the ascending colon downwards going towards the cecum so when we come down where the gas ends that is the cecum so here uh, is the cecum and then we can try to locate the appendix uh, close to it a gas in the cecum can make visualization of a normal appendix difficult but i think i am seeing a structure here uh if you can see this this structure that's probably the appendix which is arising from the anterior part of the uh, cecum so what are the characteristics of a normal appendix a normal appendix should be collapsible the vascularity should be nil or very minimal and the fat surrounding the appendix is not inflamed these three signs define a normal appendix if i try to put in power doppler within this 
there is no uh, no vascularity is noted in the wall of the appendix this one that we are seeing here is the appendix and there is uh, the lumen is collapsed there is no vascularity the fat surrounding the appendix appears normal and uh, the appendix is collapsible so this is a normal appendix these three features define a normal appendix here i am able to see the gut signature very well now uh, after we having finished the small bowel uh, we have to trace the uh, uh, large bowel and the easiest way to do is to locate the descending colon is to locate the descending colon uh, in the left iliac fossa and it is easily seen it is given away by the gas in the left iliac fossa so this is the gas that is present in the descending colon in the left iliac fossa yeah so uh, what we are seeing here is the uh, left pubic bone and then immediately medial to it is the gas in the descending colon so what we can do is we can trace this descending colon upwards and around the abdomen up to the cecum so what i am doing is what i am seeing is the descending colon since there is lot of gas and fecal matter within the descending colon i am not able to see uh, the distal wall but the wall which is closer to the uh, probe is seen clearly and uh, we are also able to see the hostra so these uh, thicker uh, ones are the hostra and they are farther apart if we can uh, if we remember the previous volvule conjunctus they were close by but here the hostra are thicker and they are further apart so what i am doing is i am trying to trace the splenic flexure of the colon may be hidden uh, in the left hypochondrium may not always be visible we can always take the help of uh, a convex probe if the uh, now here is uh, the transverse colon so i have come from i have come from here the descending colon and then the transverse colon everything is given away by the gas i trace the transverse colon up to the hepatic flexure and then again and downwards again the gas in the ascending colon and then i go downwards up to the level of cecum even when there is gas in the uh, uh, colon gas and fecal matter in the colon we are still able to see the gut signature in the uh, colonic wall a colonic wall is normal wall thickness is around 3 mm and it should not exceed that we are seeing here the um, mucosal layer so even if five layers are not seen as i said earlier three layers can always be seen so here i am seeing the uh, part of the muscularis mucosa here i am seeing the submucosa and uh, uh, muscularis propria and this is a serosa so at least 3 uh, to 4 layers can be seen even if all the five layers are not seen so and we are also seeing the hostra beautifully uh, these are the hostra in the ascending colon now since i am in the right iliac fossa i will try to make a quick search for any lymph nodes lymph nodes are seen in up to 50% of normal uh, adults and the percentage is quite high in children the normal lymph nodes are almond shaped and uh, the short axis diameter has to be measured because what happens is whenever the lymph nodes are pathologically or inflammatorily enlarged then their uh, shape becomes round or spherical they lose their normal uh, normal ovoid shape and become more spherical so the diameter that undergoes change when they are becoming spherical is the short axis diameter which we are uh, which we should be able to see here so this is the ap or the short axis diameter and it is around 2 uh, mm so the upper limit of normal in the adults is uh, around 5 mm and the upper limit of normal uh, to call an abnormal or enlarged lymph node is 7 mm in children in adults it is 5 mm 
and in children it is uh, around 7 millimeters. So these lymph nodes can be seen up to 50 percent of uh, uh, normal adults and the percentage is higher in the children. Now I am once again trying to go to see the volvule if the fluid has reached there. So yeah, no, this is too much. Yeah, here we are seeing. This is a jejunal loop which is showing some uh, fluid and the volvule. of gas. So, I will move on to the examination of the uh, parietal wall or the anterior abdominal wall of the stomach. So, as we all know, the parietal wall uh, consists of four uh, paired muscles. So, two, uh, two of these muscles or one pair is in the center, these are the recti and uh, three pairs or three muscles are on the uh, lateral side. So, in the midline we see the uh, rectus, this is one rectus muscle this is the rectus muscle on the left side and both are joined together at the linea alba. The origin of the rectus is at the pubic symphysis. So, I am at the pubic symphysis right now and I am as I go up the uh, rectus muscle is seen as a lens shaped uh, structure and it goes and inserts into the costal cartilage of the fifth to seventh uh, uh, rib. So, this is the normal appearance of the right rectus muscle it is hypoechoic, it is showing echogenic. If I make it uh, longitudinal, we can see the echogenic uh, myofibrils can be seen and both are joined together at the uh, linea alba. So, this, uh, this structure or the, this shape of uh, rectus muscle can sometimes can lead to an artifact which is called the lens effect of the rectus muscle wherein we can see that uh, uh, the structure which is imaged, uh, which is lying behind the uh, rectus, uh, there can be duplication of that structure, artifactual duplication of that structure. This particularly happens when, uh, while scanning early pregnancy, when a single gestational looks like, momentarily at least, it looks like there is there are two gestational sacs. But then, if you scan uh, carefully and from different angle then the matter is resolved. So, uh, these are the rectus muscle at the um, lateral edge of the uh, at the lateral edge of the rectus muscle we see the uh, three muscles which is the external oblique, the internal oblique and the uh, transversus abdominis. So, here we can see the uh, three muscles this is the uh, external oblique muscle. This is the uh, external oblique muscle. This is the internal oblique muscle and this is the transversus abdominis muscle. So, uh, these three muscles are present laterally one above the other. They are sheet like and all three of them uh, their tendons form an aponeurosis which then divides. So, here uh, all the three muscles, their aponeurosis here divides and covers the, this is the rectus muscle, cover, uh, divides to cover the anterior aspect of the rectus and the posterior aspect of the rectus. The uh, fascia of the transverse mus transversalis muscle is called as transversalis fascia. It is in direct continuity, it is directly attached to the peritoneum. So, this bright white line that you are seeing is the peritoneum. So, aponeurosis of all these three muscles, they uh, come together and then divide to cover the recti muscle anteriorly and posteriorly. However, once I one inch below the umbilicus, I am one inch below the umbilicus, the uh, 
posterior division is not there and the aponeurosis they pass only anteriorly so the posterior uh, division of the aponeurosis is absent beyond this point and this is called as the semilunaris uh, and this is the point where the spigelian hernia occurs uh, just lateral to the edge of the rectus muscle and where the uh, aponeurosis goes only anteriorly and not posteriorly and since uh, this may be covered by muscle so apparent bulge may not be evident uh, in spige in cases of spigelian hernia now this aponeurosis that is formed by this muscle is absent at the superficial inguinal ring and at the deep inguinal ring forming the inguinal canal so here i am seeing the spermatic cord and then i am trying to trace it within the abdomen and then as i come within the abdomen i see that here is the deep inguinal ring khokla kara khokla kara rast him to cuff in cases of hernia there is a cuff reflex positive where there is a uh, herniation of the omentum or the mesenteric fat and the bowel loop into the deep inguinal ring and uh, so the aponeurosis are deficient in the deep inguinal ring and the superficial inguinal ring uh, cause uh, and this can lead to inguinal hernias as we all know so this is how uh, we can go about uh, uh, scanning the abdomen uh, one important thing to remember is that unless and until we specifically look for the lesion in the anterior abdominal wall and uh, particularly seek it uh, it they may be missed because they are superficial and uh, may not be seen with the initial convex probe screening so uh, i think i'll stop here uh we can go for cases now